Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Welcome back to another episode of Audio Tools Explained. Today's episode is going to be going over a topic that is a little bit more complicated than what we did a couple weeks ago. This week we are going to be going over noise reduction in your music, your dialogue, any sort of audio you got. We're going to learn how to denoise it properly. And if you guys find this useful, if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that red button down below really helps. So without further ado, we're going to get into this. Now the plugin we're working with today is called the RX Denoise. Now there are of course other plugins out there. Isotope makes the RX. Waves has a few plugins that also specialize in denoising your audio. However, today we are going to be focusing on the RX. Now, for this purpose, I have a few samples today. I have three examples here of dialogue that have noise maxed out to the nines. And then I have one super extreme example over here where I actually added in an extra noisy file with this dialogue and increased it even more, which we're gonna go through how to get out as best we can. Now, each of these examples here has slightly different noise. So let's just listen to a brief clip of each, figure out what we're working with here. I think he's probably one of the few home builders that has survived all that. He's practical and very knowledgeable about the materials and what things should come. Always, not only trying to do his best for his client. I think he's probably one of the few home builders that has survived. Now with the first three examples, you might be able to get away with using those without a denoise plugin, but with our last one here, you definitely don't want to try getting away with that because it sounds like he's standing next to an HVAC unit or something. Now, before you actually get into applying this denoising plugin, whichever one you're using, whether it be the one made by Isotope or Waves or some other developer, one thing I like to do is I like to go into an EQ here and I just like to cut out a lot of the low end noise. It'll be rumble, pops, etc. If you're doing dialogue, this is a great technique because nobody's voice really has anything below 120 unless you're working with uh, someone who has their voice in the baritone range. And even then, you can go low and cut out some of the stuff in the 40s, 50s, 60s, places where the human voice just cannot reach. So I have my Pro Q3 here. I've cut out everything below 120 and we're gonna listen and see if that is high enough, low enough, or just right. I think he's probably one of the few Down. Now you could hear using the headphone tool here, we were actually cutting out just a little bit of the low end of his voice. So we're going to bring this down a little bit to more around 110, 100, so that we're not cutting out that low end of his voice and we're keeping what we want to be intact as much as we can. Now looking on the left here, you will see I have five different denoising plugins set up. This may bring about some questions, but I will explain in due time. Now. We're going to start with just one as we're going to go through what this plugin does and how we're going to be utilizing it here. Now, this actually works similar to uh, compressor in terms of the controls you have available. You have threshold, reduction, and you have a couple different modes and options here to go through. Now, as you play audio through this denoising plugin, you can actually see it come up in the middle here on the spectral analyzer, which is extremely useful because it has this threshold here where you can actually change about these different knobs and play around with it a little bit. Now, of course, you can only do this if adaptive mode up in the top here is turned off. You can take these and adjust them. However, we're not gonna get too detailed into that today. We're gonna focus mainly on this learn and adaptive mode up top, which are the two main modes of this denoising plugin. On the right here, you have the threshold and the reduction settings. The threshold, similar to the threshold of a compressor, is where it will start to denoise that part of the audio depending on where it is on the spectrum. It's not exactly like a compressor's threshold because a compressor's threshold will actually only target what goes above the threshold. This threshold targets everything below it. So if there's audio below this threshold, it is going to denoise that particular bit of audio and leave the louder bits untouched. This is really useful because noise is normally a lot quieter than your actual voice or your actual sound. 
Next to that, we have the actual reduction amount. This is just the amount of reduction that this plugin is actually doing to your sample once that audio is underneath that threshold. It goes from zero all the way up to 20 dBs of noise reduction. Now up on the top here beside our modes, we have two different little options here. We have optimized for dialogue and music and a filter type surgical and gentle. Now, of course, if you're doing dialogue, you want to stick with the dialogue, but what if you're doing scene? That's either music or dialogue. Now, according to Isotope themselves, the dialogue option is only good for dialogue, really. If you're doing singing, they actually recommend you use the music function because this is musical. On Isotope's own little page here where it gives you a little breakdown of what these settings do, it even states the dialogue option reacts to noise changes faster and isn't meant to handle the sung voice. Whereas the music option actually attenuates for those longer held out sung notes that you get when you're singing, and it's more transparent when applied to your sung vocals. This page is actually really helpful for learning how to use this plugin, so I'm gonna link it in the description for you guys as well, so make sure to go check it out. Now you also have the surgical and gentle mode. What are these? Well, gentle mode is of course more gentle. It focuses more on taking a softer approach to getting your noise out, and doesn't necessarily sacrifice as much quality of your end sample to get that noise out. If I were to break it down, I would say that gentle mode focuses more on keeping your original sample intact, while surgical mode will get as much noise out as possible regardless of the sacrifice. All right, so now that we've gone through what these settings are and we've picked the ones that we like, I'm going to be personally sticking with dialogue and gentle for now. What mode of the plugin do we pick? Learn or adaptive? Well, at the end of the day, it really comes down to what your personal preferences are and how you work with your audio. I personally like to go with the learn function. However, the learn function has its limitations as when you use the learn function, you can only optimize it for one type of noise at a time. When you go into the learn function here and you actually turn on learn mode, you have to select a bit of your audio that has just the noise playing for the plugin to learn your no noise profile. Let's take this really, really long sample here at the end and we'll put this into learn and we'll let the plugin adapt to it. So it's made its own threshold profile just for that specific type of noise. Now, if we turn the threshold up here and the reduction all the way up and just really crank out this plugin, you can hear it's actually taking out that one specific bit of noise very, very well. Always, not only trying to do his best for his client. Compared to what we had originally. Always, not only trying to do... That already is an extreme world of difference. However, let's say I have my extreme sample way over on the right here. This is not going to take out this noise nearly as effectively. Here it is with it off. I think he's... And here it is with it on. I think he's probably one of the few home builders that has... So while it's still got out that high-end hiss style noise that we had in what we learned it to, it's, it's not taking out that mid to high-end noise that is very prevalent in the sample. And then of course we have adaptive mode, which will actually adapt to changes in your noise to best suit it as possible. Let's turn on adaptive mode and just run it through here. Always not only trying to do his best for his client. It sounds almost exactly like we had it on learn mode. It's adapting to the noise very well, and it's again adjusting its noise threshold. We can also take it over to our extreme sample, and it'll do a better job of taking out that low to high-end noise that we had that the learn mode couldn't. I think he's probably one of the few home builders that has survived all that. So it took a second for it to adapt fully and get that low-end noise out just as much as it was getting the high-end noise out, but it did adapt. Now, in both these cases, however, you could hear there was still a fair amount, even possibly a significant amount, of audio that had noise in it left. Now, here's where our other four RXs on the left here come in, because this is a technique that actually a friend of mine introduced to me called feathering. Now, what is feathering? In our original plugin here, we had both of these settings absolutely cranked so that as much noise was being taken out in one pass as possible. <clears throat> this is, of course, an okay way to use this plugin. It is getting out the noise. It is significantly reducing it. However, there is a much better way to use this plugin that I actually didn't know about until a few days ago when it was brought to my attention. So this is new information for all of us. 
When you're using this technique called feathering, you're not actually cranking this plugin out. In fact, you're not even using it uh, to a mild sense of the extreme. When you do feathering, you will normally have your threshold set much lower as well as your reduction between two to four decibels of reduction depending on how aggressive you want your feathering to be. You can even go down to a reduction of one or up to five. However, you don't want to go too high because then you'll get processing art. If you don't want to go too low or you're going to have to stack this plugin dozens of times. For now, let's stick around with three. And let's go to our first example here and let's learn the noise. So we ran it through a really quick learn there so it could grab our profile. And from there, we are going to continue forward. <clears throat> if possible, give your plugin a little bit longer of a noise section to learn because this will allow it to build a better threshold. However, if you don't have a long section, use what you have. Now we're gonna listen to this with the reduction down, the reduction at around three or four, and we're actually just gonna set the threshold for it so that it's only doing just a little bit of reduction on a little bit of audio. I think he's probably one of the few home builders that has survived all the ups and downs of our industry. Now that we have this setting dialed in for this particular plugin, we're gonna go through and we're gonna do the same thing again on the output of it for the next four and see what our end result is. Okay, so I've gone through and I've done my settings for these five denoise plugins. Now this is a no latency or at least very low latency plugin, so we shouldn't notice any delay when we go through and do these. It's also very important to note that when you go through and you set these up, you have to relearn it or reanalyze it each time you set up the next one. So while I got my first one here learned in for that particular noise, after it's done processing it, it's going to be a different noise profile for the next one. And once that one's done processing, it's gonna be a different noise profile for the next one. So it's important to make sure you're reanalyzing as you go. Let's listen to our final result. I think he's probably one of the few home builders that has survived all the ups and downs of our industry. So as you can hear, it's still got a little bit of that high-end hiss. However, it has for the most part taken out all of the noise very well. And in fact, it's left our voice almost entirely intact. A lot of people, when they look at a denoising plugin, they seem to think it's some sort of magical plugin that will only ever target the noise, it'll only affect the noise. This is not true at all. A denoising plugin can greatly affect the sound of your actual sample that you're trying to save. This is because a denoising plugin, in essence, is very similar to a multiband EQ. It's going to be cutting out certain frequencies and leaving others as is. In the case of the RX and the ones made by Waves, there are, of course, a few other programs that are going on behind the scenes. However, they're still very similar to a multiband EQ, which can greatly degrade the original sample that you're trying to protect. This is why feathering is one of the better ways to use this plugin and plugins similar to it because it's not going to be affecting the base sample nearly as much. Currently, I have all of these set between 3.5 to 4.5 decibels of reduction as they're going through. I have five of them, so let's just say I'm doing a total of 20 decibels of gain reduction. If I were to do 20 decibels of gain reduction, on one plugin, you would notice for one, we would have more artifacts left over from the denoising process. And two, the dialogue itself would sound like it's losing qualities through the denoising process. It would lose body, it would lose presence, it would lose critical frequencies that allow it to sound good. However, when you're using the feathering process like this, any artifacts created are either significantly reduced or almost not present at all. Let's go over to our, ex our extreme, extreme ex example and see what we can get this to sound like after we've gone through and we've set this up in a similar way. So for this extreme example, I've actually loaded up a sixth one at the end that is off, and that one is going to be doing an extreme 20 decibels reduction by itself as an example after we listen to the original and our feathering technique. So I'm going to bypass all of these, except for our EQ here, because I love leaving that low end cut on, and we're gonna listen to the original extreme noise example again. I think he's probably one of the few home builders Almost unbearable. Now let's turn on our feathering sequence of five different denoise plugins, all doing just a little bit of noise reduction. I think he's probably one of the few home builders that has survived all the 
ups and downs of our industry. Of course, we might want to dial this back a little bit, and this is because our denoising is affecting his voice. However, there's so much goddamn noise that I added into this dialogue sample that if this was an actually recorded bit of dialogue, I think your only option left would be to go re-record it in a better setting, in a better situation. However, with the feathering technique, we've got it somewhat manageable, almost usable. Now let's do the same amount of gain reduction with just one plug-in and see what the result is. You'll find it's not quite as pleasant. I think he's probably one of the few home builders that has survived all the ups and downs of our industry. You can see I have it on adaptive mode here. And even though I pre-adapted it to this noise before I played it back for you, there was so much jumping, both in the noise and the dialogue, that it really, really degraded the sample. It also, you could hear there was noise going all over the place as well. It's almost like this single plugin couldn't fully adapt to the multiple bits of noise that were in this sample. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that red button below. It really, really helps. Make sure to leave a like and comment below any questions you may have, anything you feel I might have missed, anything you might want to see in the future. I'm always open to having uh, a little bit of friendly peer feedback as well. So make sure to leave that if you want. And I'll see you guys next week for part two of our Skyrim composition walkthrough. So enjoy the rest of your week and have a good night. <laughs>